Hi, Jake. Look, thank you very much for taking part in the Business Spotlight Series interview. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand it straight over to you, let you introduce yourself and what you do. Brilliant. Well, no, thank you very much for having me. Um, so I run a podcast company, which uh, is called Message Heard, and we're just coming up to, goodness, what will be our fifth year in January. So it's been a very long and short five years for different reasons. Um, and in terms of what we do at Message Heard, you know, we're a UK based podcast company, although in reality, you know, we're a global business, we, we work all over the world. Uh, we have sort of two distinct sides to our business. We have an editorial side where we create our own programming under our own banner. So under the Message Heard name that we put out ourselves, where, you know, we monetize that in the usual ways through sponsorship, advertising, and crucially, we own that IP. Um, we also are a sort of a big contract producer on a commissions basis for all of the big you know, media networks that you would imagine. So we were the first in Europe to have Spotify buy stuff from us. We make stuff, yeah, for, you know, Spotify, Audible, BBC, Netflix, you know, all of these great you know, wonderful media network places we make stuff for, or we harass them to make stuff for them. Uh, we do co-productions as well. And that's where we kind of team up on a partnership basis with, it may be individual journalists or journalistic organizations or charities or NGOs, or, you know, people who are deeply qualified to tell interesting stories that probably have zero experience in professional podcasting or even storytelling. So that's how we can work with them on a shared basis in terms of owning that IP, creating those stories. And really we're amplifying people that have, you know, deep qualification to tell them amazing stories. And we're, we're particularly picky about who we work with because it has to be editorially meaningful. And then we also are signed by CAA, so one of the greatest and biggest sort of talent agencies. And this is one of the newest parts of the industry, which is particularly exciting, where, you know, it's called the IP gold rush, right, where the Netflixes and, you know, Amazon Primes of this world are looking to take successful podcast shows and then turn it back into TV, film or even books. The other side of our business is the branded side of the business, and that's where we use podcasting and all of the sort of ancillary things like marketing, PR, hosting, video now, where we effectively plug in on a white, you know, white label basis to create the marketing mix of audio, or whether it's a content play or a thought leadership play or whatever it is, to make podcasting for brands. So it, it's it's not overtly a message heard, but we're making them for across all different sectors, across all different brands, from SMEs to huge, huge conglomerates. So it, we do a lot of varied, interesting, and hopefully high quality things. Fantastic. So you mentioned there, obviously, you, you're picky about who you, you invite on. So which types of people do you have on? Well, so uh, like I mentioned on the sort of commission side of the business, obviously, you know, if it's a Spotify or a BBC or an Audible or whoever, that's fantastic. Uh, if it's on the branded side, I mean, we, we do quite literally work uh, almost across every sector. So, you know, we make a lot of the shows for Red Bull, for instance, or for uh, quite a few sort of SaaS companies uh, like Buffer or Sprout Social. We actually make all of the podcasts for the Girls' Day School Trust, which is the largest independent, you know, girls' school uh, network of girls' schools in the UK. I mean, it, it really is incredibly, incredibly varied. Fantastic. And um, look, obviously, we've gone five years. Was there any impact for the business in terms of COVID? Uh, I mean, to be honest with you, I almost feel a sense of guilt for saying this. Um, but, you know, it, whenever something truly disruptive happens to an industry or in this case, the world, you know, there are winners and losers, right? And mm. and luckily, in our particular case, podcasting really, really grew during the pandemic. And I think that was because, whereas perhaps more traditional forms of content marketing, you know, were, you know, had, had kind of taken priority, suddenly everyone's stuck at home looking at each other's, you know, own faces on Zoom, like much like we are doing right now. And they realized that actually they needed to do things in a different way. And what we did quite quickly was 
learn how to do audio in an entirely remote way, but never, but not diluting the quality of that work. And so I think where perhaps particular brands or businesses had, you know, more traditional marketing campaigns and the money earmarked to do that or video, they realized they couldn't do that. And so they had a choice, either do nothing and sit on your hands or look to spend that money and deploy it in a different way. And I think our industry were the massive beneficiaries of that. Also, just in terms of listenership numbers, right? Suddenly, mm. all you can do is sit at home or go for a walk. Well, what's a good accompaniment to that? Listen to a podcast. So it, our industry really grew and, and us as a business really grew during that time. So I, I can't actually, you know, say that COVID-19 was bad for business. It was bad for, for almost any other, every other aspect of my life, but uh, not for that. <laughs> Fair enough. No, to be honest with you, I think I think it's always nice to hear positive stories as well from from COVID. So uh, I, I think it's great to hear about people growing as well throughout it. Um, and, and and moving forward, what would you see as the challenges for your business? I mean, how long is a piece of string, right? You know, you could I could sit here and moan about almost anything if you really wanted me to. I think one of the main challenges, and it's perhaps a little bit wishy washy, but I do think it is a challenge, is that. It's a nascent industry, right? The professional podcasting world has only existed really for probably as long as we've been around. You know, as a medium, it's been around for about 20 years. But in terms of it being a professional industry where it's been taken seriously, you know, the money is pouring in, that creates an exciting opportunity, but it also creates challenges because it means it's it's currently unsophisticated and it's naive the way it works. We're kind of, you know, at the sort of thicket with a machete and kind of trying to forge our own path and figure out how to move things forward. Um, and I think that a lot of people, if they come to you and they go, well, look, this industry works like this, I'm an expert. They're usually chatting nonsense, right? We're all figuring it out sort of in unison. And that creates an exciting opportunity, as I said, because it almost allows you to form your business in the way that you would like it to be without sort of, you know, sticking to the strictures of historically, it's always worked like this. So it's always going to work like this. But that also does mean that sometimes it's, it's, uh, it, it can feel disjointed, even from place to place that you're trying to work with. I think, you know, look, we don't get people going to us. So sorry, what's a podcast? Like we don't get that question anymore. But now it becomes the implementation and how you do it. That's where it, because it is so disjointed, uh, I guess, have, have, we have to, the, the, the onus is on us is to create that sort of uniformity ourselves, both as a company, but also as an industry. And, and that does present challenges. Yeah, oh, excellent. I'm, I'm glad I asked that question because that, that was that was a good answer. Um, <laughs> so um, I suppose in a, in a similar vein, you know, obviously you're going five years. It sounds like you've, you've got a kind of some interesting ideas there. What would you say has been your biggest learning as a business owner? So many, especially because in my mind, I was never going to be a business owner. I'm not one of those people that was like, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm going to, you know, I, I was, you know, I'm here by accident almost. Don't, don't tell my investors I said that. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it, but in the sense that, you know, I saw an opportunity, I wanted to, you know, and, and that sort of did that brave slash stupid thing. Well, I can do that. If I really believe in this, I can do that. But my biggest learning, I think, probably is we're a high growth industry and we're a high growth business. You know, we've gone from quite literally me sitting in a shipping container on my own to uh, we are 22 full time employees now and, you know, a whole bunch of other sort of subcontractors, freelancers, you know, plugging in. Mm as and when all over the world. And I think that going from a business of one or let's say three or four people to a business of 20, 22 plus quite quickly, it, it can be challenging because often you are growing ahead of sort of proper processes that are in place mm -hmm. as a business to properly manage your business. Yeah. And I also think that if you're working in an industry like ours, which you know, you live and die by the quality of your content and the quality of your processes. You have to manage your growth in a way that means that you are never diluting the quality of your work or, or the professionalism of your work just for growth. So I think that growth is fantastic, but unfettered, unmanaged growth can actually be to the detriment of your business because it can weaken your brand. So learning that quite quickly, and in some cases painfully, 
um, was probably uh, the biggest learning I've had as a business and, and continuing on, right? You know, I think it will be the same again, going from 20 to 50, from 50 to 100, you know, if we ever get there, you know, how do you always manage the quality and the processes? Yeah, no, fantastic. Definitely agree with that 100%. Um, and and uh, again, a slightly similar, but it's a slightly different question. Any advice you'd have for your 18 year old self? Um, I mean, it sounds a bit trite, doesn't it? But, you know, that kind of, oh, well, it's going to be okay kind of thing. You know, I was an 18 year old that didn't particularly think I was very smart. Uh, I, you know, I wasn't the most fantastic academically at school uh and don't get me wrong a lot of that was sheer laziness and on my part and and me sort of having the arrogance of going well I'm never going to use physics am I so I'm not going to try during that so you know but I think for me it would be uh, the best advice I would give myself actually is is yes focus on the things that you're interested in and work really hard at them but also try and focus on the things that you're perhaps less interested in, because actually the reality is they're going to intersect with the things that you care about. And, you know, that kind of, you know, what's the meaning of life question of, you know, to know everything about something and something about everything. Right. I think if I could have convinced myself at 18, that probably would have made me a more well-rounded 18 year old and probably would have set, you know, set me up for success better not that I'm complaining now you know I've got there in the end and I'm and I'm very happy but I think that probably would have been a healthier outlook for me as an 18 year old excellent and um you know obviously you you speak to a lot of different people you come across a lot of different different uh, I guess sources of inspiration what do you find at the moment is the most inspiring thing to you that's good I think probably keeping it within my industry um because otherwise you know i could literally talk so i'll go blue in the face i think with podcasting it has to be the level and quality of storytelling in particularly sort of journalistically that is being produced all over the world but in particularly in this country at the moment there are you know so many places that are doing amazing you know important impactful storytelling that just makes you think wow and the thing about audio is there's nowhere to hide it's not like film or video where oh this is a bit weak let's do a really exciting bit of b-roll to you know to sort of distract viewers right you there is nowhere to hide in audio and so it's you know something is either good or it isn't and you know we're big believers that you know something should be as long as it is good and not a second longer and actually just the quality of storytelling of journalism of podcasting in this country has always been high but I feel like it's at an all-time high and, and listening to you know competitors or you know or allies or you know others in the industry and even you know the thing that I really do find inspiring is okay it's great when a big news organization or you know a podcast company like us makes a show but the thing about podcasting is because there are no barriers to entry, you know, you can literally just have a phone and create a podcast. And if it's successful enough, you know, if it's good enough, you know, hopefully an audience will find it and they will resonate with it. What I find inspiring is those people who are hobbyists, but they end up creating something that actually does resonate, grows an audience and is seen for the quality of that work they've done without them having to be given or gifted a platform or loads of expensive technology. You know, you can mm. do something incredibly grassroots and it end up having huge, huge impact. And so I find that really inspiring. Yeah, fantastic. I think there's, there's definitely a sort of push towards authenticity in terms of things rising up and being picked up, which is which is great. So um, yeah, that, great, great uh, learning. Thank you for that. And as, as a final note, Jake, is there any offer or any news you'd like to share with the audience? Uh, I mean, I certainly would be, you know, sort of watch this space, right? So, you know, we're constantly creating um, creating stuff at, at Message Heard, and we've got a lot of shows in development or in the works at the moment. I think we've got about 12 to 14 things in production at the moment, I think. Um, some of those things are continuations of things that you know we've had a real amount of success with so we've got conflicted which is one of our main marquee shows which has an audience of millions coming back for season four early next year and also our partnership with the key of independent so we with with the audio partners of the key of independent the largest uh english news speaking you know news network on the ground in ukraine they're obviously doing amazing important 
journalism on the front lines of war and getting their story out via audio has been impactful but we're mm. also scaling that and doing more so i would say in particular power lines is the show that we make with them we've just been uh you know awarded lots of or nominated for a bunch of stuff and, and that really is if you want to understand what's going on in ukraine from the people that are actually there and qualified to tell it uh i would say keep keep looking at that keep listening to that yeah great thank you for that that that's, that sounds sounds very interesting and uh definitely worth worth checking out so thank you very much for taking part jake uh, it's been great to speak to you great to get your insights and, and i appreciate it no thanks for having me thanks a lot